Okay, Shalom. Um, our topic is, is at first glance, and was at first glance to me, kind of a, a, uh, a, side, a side alley of Vilchos Pesach. And um, there's a custom of eating that eggs at the Seder. And, and I'll just tell you how I got to it. We, we, uh, we, find our, we found our family, found ourselves uh, davening together. And we had time between Mincha and Marev. And I just opened up the book on Pesach, and we got to different material. So we opened up and we saw this, this section about eating eggs at the Seder. And then I realized that it is a, a, a good example of where a, a seemingly side minhag uh, actually ends up having, uh, having some interesting broader ramifications. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's address our topic. Now, what, what we're gonna do is, is gather four different approaches uh, in the late Rishonim and the early Achronim to, uh, to this custom of eating eggs on the Seder night. Just a little bit about the custom. Uh, this was one of the things I remember from youth, that everybody, even though they weren't so acquainted with the Seder and with Pesach and with Halacha, but this idea that eggs and salt water was something we always had on the Seder night. Now, um, Everybody would talk a lot about cholesterol and all that kind of stuff uh, as we were eating them. And uh, I, I, uh, I, I have this, this fond memory of this, this minhug, which I really didn't think much of for many years. <laughs> and, uh, and so this year, I saw that there's a whole discussion. Welcome, Ariel. I, there's a whole discussion of uh, of this, and it touches on on what I believe are two broad issues, which I'd like to share. Now, first of all, the earliest source for the Menag I saw was from the Maharil, and uh, a little bit about the Maharil, and the person who he quotes is Rav Sholem of Neustadt. Um, this is the way the Sefer looks in a very early printing, which uh, I try to pull my stuff off of either... Uh, Hebrewbooks.org, uh, or uh, or uh, I'm, I use uh, Otzer Achachma, and uh, with Hebrewbooks.org especially, they always often have very early uh, pub uh, publications, very early uh, editions, excuse me, of of, uh, of some of the classics for it. So you see what this was: Moreno Chacham Hashalim, Kvod Moreno Rav Yaakov, Ben Kvod Moreno Rav Moshe Halevi. Zal shechiber v'tiken minage kal kadosh kadosh Ashkenaz. So he is one of those who was the the origins um, of what we call the minag Ashkenaz. Yeah, yeah, it could be by the way. Rav David probably has copies of some of this far. So ulahoros nasam belibam es haderech hashel yochobam. He instructed the the path to take, what to do, from the beginning of the year till the end, nidfas po savionita. Um, and uh, it says exactly where and when it was printed. Now, um, the so the Maril is a uh, He's called the Avi Minage Ashkenaz. What he did, he has the what 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 I've seen from him are this these this two part safer, one which is Shadows and Chubas, but the other responsive, but the other is is Minhagim, and he goes through he goes through the Minhagim. And so from there, um, many, many of the of the sources of the Minhagim of the Ashkenazi community come from. Now, here's what he says. Beves uh, Maharash. Now, that, I believe, is most likely Rav Sholem of Nustad, who was a Rebbe of the Maharil, and uh, he also has a Sefer of Minhagim, which uh, I, didn't, I didn't find access to. Beves, uh, sorry, I know we have access to it, but I didn't find this in the Sefer. Beves Maharash Besuda Belel Pesach, in his house on the Sudalas, they would eat eggs before everything. Meaning at the beginning of, of Shulchan Aruch, 
the first the first uh, thing they ate was eggs. The Amar Taima he he said the reason was was as follows: the Targum de Beitza Beya, the Aramaic translation of the word Beitza egg is Beya. De Bar Rachmana Alan Ufarkinan, that that God had. Uh, mercy on us. He desired to have mercy on us, and he redeemed us. So it ends up that um, that uh, the the uh, the eggs are part of the major theme of the whole Seder night, which is God redeemed us. And so they're they're like the korban pesach, they're like the matzah, and uh, it's a it's a it's a minute that somehow was connected with this uh, with this with this play on words. Now I don't know when you have these kind of things where it was a minute he knew we had, and then he he added meaning to an existing minhag, or he uh, he personally did this. Because of this reason, I don't know. There's so so very little. There's very little information on this. Now, approach number two, and we're going to split it into two, is the approach of the Rama, and the Rama has a sif has this in in a, in the Shulchan Aruch itself. This minute appears. Um, haga Haga is the way is is the word note, which introduces the words of the Rama and the Shulchan Aruch. Rama is Rav Moshe Isserlis, who is a contemporary with Rav Yosef Karo. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he corresponded with him, and um, <clears throat> he wrote his his notes to the to the Shulchan Aruch, and they're referred to as the Mapa Shulchan Aruch, the set table, and Mapa the tablecloth. So he writes as follows: No mekomos. In some places, they have the custom lechol basuda beitzim to eat eggs at the suda zecher la avelus. As a as a zecher to mourning, m o u r n i n g, venirali atam, and it seems to me that the reason is mishum shalel tishabav nikba belel pesach. The night of tishabav is set, um, fixed in the calendar, on the day of the week. The same as the night of pesach. Ve'od, and furthermore, zecher lechurban shayu makridim korban pesach, as a zecher to a, rem, a, 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 a reminiscence of the destruction of the temple, for they used to offer the korban pesach. So, so this this is almost wild that uh, on the night of pesach we remember Tisha B'av. On the night of pesach we remember the destruction of the temple. Now a little bit about this thing of the night of, of Tisha B'av. There's something called Atbash, which is a, a, a certain way, a certain code using the Hebrew language. It actually appears in Tanakh, uh, in some psukim, if I'm not mistaken, in Yirmiyahu, it is used. <clears throat> and one of the things about it is that uh, the way the Jewish calendar is set up, the, our, our perpetual calendar, Again, this wouldn't this wouldn't necessarily be the case when the when the calendar was functioning as normal. When the calendar was, the calendar was functioning as normal, every month they would they would wait to see when the witnesses would come. Every month they would wait to see uh, uh, they would they would calculate if there's a, if there's a reason to uh, to um, when to fix the, the the new moon based on their astronomical calculations. But from the time of Hillel Akatan. One of the descendants of uh, of, of uh, Hillel. Mm -hmm. uh, Rabbi Klaus. Yes. Quick, quick, quick question. So I heard that even in the times before the calendar was fixed, they would kind of force the witnesses to come on certain times or push them off so that it would always come out the way it ended up being fixed. Anyway, is that true? Well, what what I know from from the Mishnayos and from my little little learning in Rosh Hashanah is that. They knew by calculation when the new moon was supposed to take place, uh, and there were two things happening simultaneously. They they had they had knowledge, uh, very clear astronomical knowledge about about the new moon, 
and they followed the halachas about about witnesses coming in. However, um, it was certainly uh, it would certainly end up not being as precisely fixed uh, uh, perpetually uh, the way it was now. So so that it would come out exactly as it is now, I would find that very difficult. But uh, but that it was that that the the witnesses coming in was also tempered with astronomical knowledge that's that seems to be clear so i don't know if that's a complete answer to your question but um i believe so israeli farmers to institute yes i saw that i saw that there was a uh uh there was a friend of mine who works in uh, in a law office and he uh he sent us a uh what the judges how the judges uh, uh, responded to that. Maybe I'll, if, I, if I dig it up, I'll send it to you. So now the way Atbash works is that the way our calendar works, the first night of, of Tisha B'Av, this, we, this, uh, this they give over to the kids in grade school that the first day of Pesach ends up being on the same day of the week as Tisha B'Av, that the second day of Pesach comes up being on the same day of the week as Shavuos, the third day, uh, as uh, the same day as Rosh Hashanah, the fourth day, the same day as Kuf, Kriyas HaTorah, Simchas Torah, um, Hey, uh, the fifth day comes out on the Tzom, on the, on the fast, the uh, Yom Kippur, the sixth day comes out on Pei, which is Purim. Now, there it's got to be the previous Purim. And there are some who suggested the following, Zion Ayin, the last one, which is that uh, the day, the seventh day of Pesach comes out on the same day of the week as Arava, which is Hoshana Rabbah. And, um, and it ends up, according to the uh, modern Israeli calendar, the same day as Yom Ha'atzma'ut. You can tell where this, uh, this uh, list is coming from. I think it's from the yeshiva in Beit El, which is a, a, a Zionist yeshiva. So um, that's, that's Atbash. So because the first night of Pesach comes out on the same night as Tisha B'Av, so we have, uh, we, we remember that by, by introducing a sign of, of mourning, a sign of Avelis, uh, eating eggs to the Seder. Why is, why is eating eggs a sign of, uh, of mourning? So the idea is that something that's round is, is, a, is a food for the mourner, because there's a galgal choser ba'olam, there's this uh, life cycle. And, um, and uh, going from birth to, to death, and then rebirth in the next world. And so uh, we, we, uh, we feed the mourner there. Now, um, the, some beans would be a natural, a natural choice also. The only thing is you don't eat kidneys on on, uh, in the Ashkenazi community, this, and that's what this custom we see in the Ashkenazi community, even though uh, later on, um, I believe the Kafachayim brings that, that uh, Sfaradim have the, have the minig of eating that also. So, now, um, I just want to point out what the Gra points out and what, uh, what, is, uh, what uh, others point out. There is a um, there's a midrash which points out the connection. There's a pasuk in Eicha, Hispiani bamrorim, that God made me satiated with moror, hirvani laana, and He made me full of laana, which is another bitter thing. So the the, the midrash says this is the midrash Eicha, Hispiani bamrorim, ze yom tovarishon shel pesach, dichsibo al matzos mororim. I, he satiated me with with uh, moror when we eat moror on the first night of Pesach. Irvani laana mashe hispiani belel yom tov rishon shel Pesach. Irvani belel tisha b'av laana. Corresponding to that, he gave me on the night of tisha b'av this bitter, heavy lel yom tov rishon shel Pesach. Who lel tisha b'av? Because the night of the first uh, day of night of Pesach comes out as the same night. As, as the night of Tisha B'Av. Um, now, the, I want to point out that there are really two different sides to this. The, the, the Ramas is two different, the, two different things. Number one, because of the night of Tisha B'Av. 
And number two, Zechel the Korban, when they were eating the Korban Pesach. These are two separate things. Um, the uh, the um, excuse me, yeah. So this, I will file this away for a moment, and we'll come back to it. Uh, just want to make sure that was clear. Now, the Prima Godim, um is one of the one of the main super commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch uh, or Achayim has the Magen of Ram and the Taz, two two major commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch. But the Prima Godim has a uh, has a commentary on those commentaries, and he has two sections of his commentary. Um, the uh, a section on the Magen of Ram and the section on the on the Taz, and um, uh, the Prima Godim, the Bale Halacha, they they know the Prima Godim back and forth. I remember there was a Rav, uh, Rav uh, Herschel Schechter developed a connection with Rav uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein apparently. At least I heard him say this anecdote, and. Uh, there was some, uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein said, uh, said like to Rav Shechter, I think he was trying, it sounded like he was trying to make it clear to him that this is the way it should be. He says, he says, he says we're supposed to, I, 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 I don't remember the exact Lashon. The exact Lashon I think was, uh, we know pre-Megadim like, like Ashrei Yoshua Vesecha. Meaning they, they knew the pre-Megadim backwards and forwards. This is, it was, a, it's a major, it's a major say from Sakalacha. Anyways, um, he, uh, let me put my pointer on here. Where's my pointer? Here we are. Here. Ayn Mugan of Ram. Okay, here we are. The Ayn Biad Yosef. Have you received the Taz? I brought it when I discussed the Taz. Demes Avram Avinu Alavar Shalom Be'erif Pesach. Avram Avinu passed away on Erev Pesach. U Seudas Havra. Now, I don't know what this means. I'm not sure what that means. The uh, Adashim Bekitnios. And The Sudas Havra, again, whatever he said there, is, is supposed to come from, is supposed to be done with uh, beans and kidneys, legumes. We don't eat kidneys on Pesach. That's the Ashkenazic Mina, Kibesim, and Tafnun Gimel. And Ula Avram Gil, now, why, why are we, uh, commemorating the Sudas Havra. What is the Sudas Havra? The first meal after the, uh, after the mourner comes home. So people give him food and the first thing that he eats is, is, is eggs. So, so uh, why are we commemorating the, the meal after the morning, after the burial of Avram Avinu on the Seder night? So, True, okay, Avram Avinu passed away on Erev Pesach, but, but why is there a need for us to commemorate his uh, Sudas Avra on the, Pesach, on the Seder night? Well, la Avram Gila uh, Hashem Galus Mitzrayim. Hashem revealed the exile to Egypt to Avram Avinu. Avos Nigalu. And in the merit of the Avos, we were redeemed. The Galus Mitzrayim Shalosh Shomu and the fact that we didn't have the full 400 years, and the tradition is that the, uh, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu chishev esakets, we say that on the Haggadah, on the, on the Seder night, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu um, brought the Geula early, Garam HaGolos HaKeros. So this opened us up to these other Golios to, and that makes up the, the, the missing time. Um, therefore remember this. And in the in his piece on the on the Taz, he says this also. I am Biad Yosef Parshas told us Prush Aleph, Asav Avar Khamesha Averos, Asav 
did five sins on the day that uh, he became bar mitzvah. Baal narum urasa. Remez ki Avram Avinu alav shalom zal meis be'eruv Pesach. Like we just said, umishum hachi ochlin beitzim zechol avelus. The Yaakov bishel nezid. Yaakov cooked the nezid. He cooked these beans, which is legumes, which is the food of avelim. Nezid velechem. Excuse me, velechem matzah. Benasan laesav. Benasan laesav. Um, and he gave it to Esav. And what do we say? Kol ha'ochel matzah be'erev Pesach, kivo al-arusa beveis chamim. Anybody who eats matzah on, on Erev Pesach, so it's like having relations with his mi'uresis, uh, with the woman who he did Erusin with, but not yet Nesuin. Now remember in the times of, of Chazal, the two stages of marriage, Erusin or Kiddushin, and the second stage, Nisuin, were separated by about a year. And you had women walking around who were Nara Hamurasa, a girl who was betrothed, but was not yet uh, living with her husband. And there's a special Chiyumisa uh, on that kind of Gilei Arayos, that kind of Eishasish, of Nara Hamurasa. So, um, and, and Chazal say that, that Esav did that of error. Now, Chazal also say anybody who eats Matzah on Erev Pesach, it's like he had relations with his Arusa while she was still uh, not married to him through Nisu, and she was in the house of her father, his, his future father-in-law, or his, his present somewhat father-in-law. Now, what's the connection? So this, the, the, the simple thing is that this is supposed to be something you're waiting for the proper time. So matzah is supposed to be eaten on the Pesach, on Pesach night. So you're not supposed to be eating the birthday cake before the birthday party. You're not supposed to be having the, having the matzah before the night of Pesach. And, and especially because we're supposed to be eating matzah on the Teavon. We're supposed to be eating matzah with excitement. We have a minhag of extending it some a month, some two weeks, uh, not to eat matzah before Pesach. But a Chazal have it as as Kol Ha'Ochel Matzah Be'er Pesach. So, so Esav ate matzah on Erev Pesach. Yaakov gave him the 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 food of the Sudas Havra of of, uh, of Avram Avinu, which was supposed to be eaten that evening. So he had it during the day. Okay, have a look there. Um, Yeah. Okay, and, and he speak, speaks out the, uh, the in the rest of the piece. Now, so so according to the Prima Godim, um, there's another reason to uh, eat eggs on the night of, of, of Pesach to commemorate Avram Avinu. So as we're eating the eggs, so far there's three things, uh, three and, and one of them splits into two that are happening. Number one, Hashem, uh, desired us he wanted to he 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 had mercy on us he redeemed us so as reading that it's a zechalagula number two it's it's commemorative of of avelis um uh yeah i haven't heard that about the the minug of uh of a week before pesa it's dumb but it's lack of knowledge i don't know all the different minug so um, that was a, a, a reaction to a comment in the chat about, about leaving, uh, about not eating matzah a week before Pesach. I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, the, um, the, um, um, so, so, so far we have three reasons. Number one, uh, redemption. Number two, uh, mourning. And that splits into two. Uh, the morning of Tisha B'av, commemorating Tisha B'av, and number two, Zechel uh, L'Churban, because we're no longer offering the Korban Pesach, and number number three is a, is a, is commemorating the morning, uh, so the 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 Seuda after the the Avelis 
um, after the burial of Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was the one who was who was foretold the the exodus, the the exodus after being told about the uh, the Golos of Mitzrayim. So um, and and it was in Avram Zechus. So Avram Avinu is very much tied up with Pesach night. Now, um, reason four is the Vilna Gon. And this takes us to a new dimension. Uh, the Vilna Gon says the following, Vilinira. So this is the Vilna Gon. Of, no, the, the Vilna Gon's uh, commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, uh, he uh, brings the sources, the primary sources that the Shulchan Aruch, the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah's words are stemming from. And uh, the <clears throat> the uh, the Vilna Gon's ancestor was the Be'eragola. Uh, if you look on a page of the Mishnah Bura, so the Be'eragola is the one who appears in the margin in small Rashi letters, who gives the sources of the Shulchan Aruch's uh, rulings. And the Vilna Gon, uh, continuing in the tradition of his uh, of his answer, I, I, I forget if it was his great grandfather or great great grandfather. Don't remember exactly. But he was descended from Ramosha Rivkas. Rivkas. Um, so, so the the Vilna Gaon himself, in a much, uh, I think, a much more thorough way, uh, gives the sorts of the Shulchan Aruch. Here, he gives his own reason. Valiniratam, and it seems to me that the reason is as follows. Mipneisha osimos ozecher lechagiga. We. The egg is reminiscent of the Korban Chagiga. Now, there were two Korbanos that were offered here. There was the Korban Pasach and the Korban Chagiga. And Masech and Pesach speaks about that. The Korban Chagiga is, is from the word Chag. Um, the, in the word Chag, the doubled Gimel, uh, the second Gimel of the uh, drops. Uh, but in the word Chagiga, or the word Lachgog, to celebrate, so the, the second Gimel is there. So the Korban Chagiga was, was eaten on the night of Pesach also. And they would eat the Korban Chagiga, and then they would eat the Korban Pesach al Hasova. They would eat it after they were already satiated. That's why we have the Afikomen, which is reminiscent of eating the Korban Pesach. Again, not, I uh, just touched on a, a landmine about, about uh, what exactly the eating Afikomen is. But, but assume that approach, that the Afikomen is, is reminiscent of the Korban Pesach. And previously, uh, we we have something that is that is remnant reminiscent of the chagiga. We have to eat it. Now what, what is he getting from? He's saying, listen, we have on the seder plate these things. So everything we eat, we eat the matzah, we eat the moror, we eat the the chazeret, we eat the egg. I what about the zroa? What about the shank bone? The fisha osino so we roast it. That's what we all do. Again, we use a we use a fliggle. We use the the wing of a of a chicken, um, and so that's you know erev Pesach. We we roast it and uh, we usually eat it the next morning. Ve'enochlin sleep, but on the night of Pesach we don't eat roasted food, and so that's why we don't eat the zroa. Ve'yotzim ba'afi komen shochlim, and we we fulfill that through eating the afi komen. So it ends up, according to him, that the that the um, that the eggs are zecher lechagiga are zecher to the korban chagiga. Now he brings, by the way, the midrash uh, uh, that we spoke about as as a source for the um, for the Ramah. Now, in the that's what we have in the Shulchan Ar. You know, it sounds like it's his own suggestion. But the way we have it in the, there's a book, Maisa Rav. Maisa Rav um, is, is uh, here's a, the one printed in Vilna and Haradna. Um, it collects the minhagim of the Vilna Gon. Let's just read this. Bo medubar Maisa Rav, bo medubar nichbadot, masse yedei tzadik vechol mitzadot. Isha sheru halukim bo haluach vaidot. Aidut. Yesod olam umlao, geon Yisrael uplao, shmo agadol mekudash umulal mi mizrach shemesh ad mebo'o. Again, there's no lack of superlatives you can say about the Vilna Gon because they're all, they're all accurate. Uh, they're all probably an understatement. 
the spirit of God was within him, the Luchos and the Edos, the foundation of the world and all that was in it, the Gon of Israel and his wonder, his his name is, is is holy and praised from one side to the other. So that's where he lived. And uh, they printed up his minhagim in a book called Maiserab. And in Maiserab it says as follows. Then they eat the egg. It's not because, now here he's saying it, uh, here he's he's uh, saying differently the Ramah explicitly. It's not because of Avelos. God forbid we should mention the Avelos of Tishabab today. No, on the contrary, it's reminiscent of the Korban Chagiga, the, the festive, festive Korban. Kitzli, in the Chol Pesach. We don't eat uh, something that's zecher to the korban pesach. Rak basar zecher le pesach. Now here it says we have some meat to zecher le pesach. Ubeitza zecher le chagiga. We have an egg reminiscent of the chagiga. The achar kach ochlin afikomen kezayis. Then we have a kezayis uh, for the afikomen. Okay, and then he talks a little bit more about about other minagim on the night. But but. Uh, he not he doesn't just say here's another reason he says God forbid we should say such a thing how can you say such a thing that we're going to have you're going to be reminiscent of the of, of Tishabam on the Seder night now I would like to venture a suggestion uh, for the for the Rama um, and and I don't know if it's a total answer uh, defending the Rama. Uh, from the from the critique that appears in the Maaser Rav, and it doesn't appear on the on the Shulchan Aruch, even though there are times when the when the Vilna Gon does uh, critique the the Ramah. I'm just remembering what he talks about. Let's say Pardis. Uh, um, okay, we'll leave that out. But the the um, um, perhaps it's perhaps it, it, it's as follows. Um, Let's look at a wedding. At a wedding, we also do something that is connected with mourning. Uh, we put ashes on the head of the chassam. Plus, uh, we, we break a glass underneath the chuppah. Now, there is a side of breaking a glass that appears in the Gemara that doesn't seem to be specifically connected with the um, with with the destruction of the temple, um, we the it seems to be that there was a there was a um, there was a wedding that was going on and and people were getting overly joyous. The whole point of the Gemara is, is retaining a certain it's the beginning of the fifth parak of Brachos, uh, retaining a certain level of seriousness, and. And uh, so one of the Amoraim, I believe, he broke a glass and then people got a little more serious. Now, um, the theme of that Gemara is Asr l'malei schok piv be'olamazet. Because it says, it's, it's, it's Asr to have this full, like, full laughter, full joy in this world. Only then, only when the redemption will come, will we be totally full of joy. So it ends up that um, we want to make sure there's something diminished in our joy. <clears throat> now, the way we, we the, the, the common minag is at a wedding to actually connect it specifically with the, with the Avelus over the Korban. And we say, <laughs> when if I forget Jerusalem, I will forget uh, my, uh, the way they translate is my, my right hand will, will forget dot, 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 and they, so they usually translate, we'll forget it's coming or something like, will not be my right hand, won't, we'll forget how to, how to operate. May my tongue, God forbid, may my tongue cling to the palate if I don't remember you. If I don't have your shalayim above the heights of my joy. So it seems like, it's, it seems as follows, that Dafka at times when we are very joyous, we remember that our joy isn't 100%. Now, um, 
I want to connect this with something Rav Soloveitchik mentioned. At the end of the Seder, and at the end of Yom Kippur, we say, Lashana Hababi Rishalayim Abnuya. Why is it that the end of the Seder and the end of Yom Kippur, we say, Lashana Hababi Rishalayim? Those are the two times in the liturgy that when we say, again, people sing it all the time. Uh, but why is it at those two junctures we say, Lashana Hababi Rishalayim? Because, because the main attraction is not there. On, on, on Yom Kippur, the main attraction is the avoda of the Kohen Gadol. And the avoda of the Kohen Gadol, we don't have nowadays. So we go through a whole Yom Kippur without the Iker. Ha'iker chasam in a sefer, the main thing is missing. And the same thing with Pesach night. The main, uh, the main feature of the, of the Seder Suda was the Korban Pesach. And we don't need the Korban Pesach. We have, a, we have an Afikom and a Zekrom to the Korban Pesach. So we say, Lashana Hababi Rishalayim. So it could be that there's, it's not Avelis that we're doing. It's Zechel Avelis. Now, so, so <clears throat> the, because we don't have the Korban Pesach, we, we note the fact that the Korban Pesach is missing and Dafka, when we are very joyous, we note that our joy isn't complete. Now, that's one side, the side of, of the Korban Pesach, but the Rama is another side of, 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 Zechel, uh, of Zechel at Tisha B'Av. What, what is this thing about the same night of Tisha B'Av as the night of, of the night of Pesach? So opposites are often uh, connected. Um, you'll find sometimes people, Dafka, laugh when they are in a very awkward, sad situation. Like when something tragic happens, sometimes people have an, have an awkward laugh. Um, and um, the, the opposite reaction that is appropriate. Now, uh, why do I mention that? Because, because um, the two polar opposites are connected. The redemption from Egypt and the destruction are are the two times when we cross, when the, when the graph crosses the zero line. So one, it goes from zero upwards, and at Tisha B'Av it goes from zero downwards. But it's the, both, both, both those points are, are, are united, if you will. Um, I would venture to say that it could be that there's a positive side of it that now when we note the fact that we're still in Tisha B'Av mode, because the, gull the, the gullus, we're still in this, in this gullus, there's still this, this um, we, are not yet, we are not yet redeemed. So therefore, on Pesach night, we're thinking about that time when Tisha B'Av will become a Yom Tov. And we remember the fact that our Pesach even though we were, were celebrating the redemption, but we are looking forward to the future redemption, which we're still not in. So Pesach night is actually like, a, a, like an offbeat kind of, kind of thing. It's a little different than Shavuos and Sukkot, Shemini Atzer, Simchas Torah, where, where that celebration exists in its, in, its, in its grandness. You know, Matan Torah, we celebrate the Torah. The fact that God protects us. Um, but Pesach Tafka, when we're celebrating redemption in the middle of exile. So, so it's, an, it's, it's an offbeat Pesach. So that's perhaps this, this Zecher to, to, uh, to Tisha B'Av, which is bringing us to the reality of of we are remembering the redemption, even though we're mamish, we're, 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 we're in Golos. Um, I want to end with two things. Number one, not uh, Um there, there could be a practical difference between some of these different reasons. Uh, which night do you eat eggs? So according to the first approach, that uh, that it's because of 
Doya Kodesh Baruch Hu Rachamim Alein. God, God had mercy for us, wanted to have mercy over us, and He redeemed us. So that is that's appropriate for the first and the second nights. But if it's connected with which night Tisha B'Av falls out on, well, that's only the first night of of of, uh, of Pesach. The second night already is the night of that Shavuos falls out on. It's not the night of Tisha B'Av. On the other hand, if it's Zecher to the fact that we don't have the Korban Pesach anymore, that's appropriate on both days of uh, on on both days of 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 the both seders, the first and the second seder. The Sudas Avra of Avram Avinu, though, is only on the first night, right after Erev Pesach. On the other hand, if it's Zechel Lechagiga, it would be appropriate to have it on both days. Also, which eggs to eat? According to the Gra, you're Dafka eating the egg which is on the Seder plate. And his idea is that really everything on the Seder plate we should be eating, except for the, for the, for the, for the shank bone. But according to the others, there's this independent. Uh, the egg on the Seder plate is reminiscent of the Korban Chagiga, fine. And everybody else says we eat eggs for some other reason, unconnected with the Korban Chagiga. Um, last but not least, um, we we have um, we have eggs. Just a moment, I, was, I noticed a message in the chats. Yeah, I think so, as far as I know, yeah. Um, so um, the reason I brought this, again, it's a, it's a safer, um, just a minute. I was looking for the source of eating eggs with salt water. And the only thing I found was this. Uh, again, it's from a safer, Rabbi Yisrael Chaim Friedman, the, the Av Beitin of Rachov. I believe it's from the Hasidic world. And he writes as follows. Um, he brings the minhag of eating eggs, the maharil, he brings the marash, the, the rama, um, and um, he, brings, uh, he brings a remez, uh, hayom atem, let me just show this. Hayom atem yotzim b'chodesh aviv. Today you are going out in the in the month of, of spring. Is the Rashi Tevos Aleph Yud Bet Hey, and that is also the Rashi Tevos of Echa Yashva Badad Ha'ir Rabasiya. So that's that's once again this Tisha B'av night and and Pesach night connection, which again is we connected with the same night of the redemption as the night of the destruction. But God willing, that will be. That will be the night of the, there will be a future redemption and, and speedily in our days. And Tisha B'av will become a Chag. Um, have a look at the Prima Godim, that Avram Avinu passed away in Erev Pesach, and that's why we eat Beitz in five. Now, yesh nogim melech. There are those who have the custom of dipping the, the egg in salt water. Um, and then he has a diyun. There are those who have a custom of, of only doing two dips on the Seder night. One when you dip the carpus, and one when you dip the mortar in the, in the charosis. So, but, if you're, but now you're dipping your egg in the salt water. What's going on? Unless you want to say that all the, all the salt water dips are all considered like one. In other words, you dip in salt water, you dip in charosis. There's two things you dip in the salt water, the karpas and the and the egg. What do you mean you have two? We dip in the moro and we dip in kore. But no, 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 it's the same thing. It's connection with the same thing. Um, I had once heard that it was reminiscent of the tears. Um, but again, it could be that's uh, morphing something from the, from the karpas. I don't know. So that's my, I want to leave you the question. What is the source of what is the 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 significance of of dipping of or of having the eggs with with uh, with salt water? Don't know, don't know. So in short, four different reasons, um, and each one connected with great things. According to one, eating the egg—that's the the Maharash, quoted by the Maril Shalom of Neistat. 
it's it's the redemption. God had God had rachmim over us in Medinas. Number two, the Rama, uh, who who famously says that that the that it's it's either memory, it's in, it's zechol avelus, uh, kind of a shocking thing. But the way we explained it is, as we're in great joy, we note that it's not 100 percent complete, or as we're doing as as we're missing the main the main feature of the seder we know we know its absence um and then the connection between the first night of tisha B'av and the and the first night of, of pesach number three the sudas havrav avram mavinu and avram mavinu being as we're eating that we're remembering the fact that avram mavinu was so connected to the redemption um it was in his chus and he was the one who was foretold about the exodus from egypt and finally, the Vilna Gon, who, who says that eating the, the egg is like, is, is a zecher to eating the Korban Chagiga. Um, that is what I wanted to share with you tonight.